Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt with a jelly roll and it's a jelly roll race quilt. That means it's pretty fast to make and the nice thing about this is that it's an adjustable size so you can adjust this to make almost any size quilt. We've done a video showing how to do this in the past but I've come up with some new hints and new ways to make it that I think will improve it. So what we need is one jelly roll and then we need three accent colors. So I know I'm gonna use the green and this blue and then we'll just pick whichever one of these matches all these strips the best. One way to make this quilt is just to keep the fabrics in the order they come in in the jelly roll. But there's another way to do it. So we're going to sort our colors a little bit. We are going to put the darkest ones in the middle of the quilt. So I'm gonna kind of stack everything up. We've got dark blues, medium blues. I'm gonna put all the lights over here, the greens here, and I'm gonna sort it a little bit. You can see all the different colors I have here, and I'm gonna to wanna to do the quilt in this order. I'm gonna to wanna to put this in the middle, some of this on each side, green on each side, some taupe, and some cream. So, this is how the quilt is gonna start. I think this one will end up in the very middle. Maybe we'll put this one in the very middle because I think it's better looking. And then we're going to put some blue on each side of it. So I'm gonna put one blue here, and then we'll just grab another blue here, and then we'll just keep stacking these up on each side till we've used up all the blues. And it really doesn't matter that much what order you put them in. So these are going to go on top, and then these are gonna go on the bottom. So I'm building out as I go. Let's put a few more of these light blues. We'll put these on each side. So I'm putting one on the top, and then one or two on the bottom. And then every so often, I'm gonna pick it up and shake it out a little bit so they will stay in order. Next, I'm gonna put some green on each side. And it doesn't really matter what's next to what, because this is not going to get sewn next to it. This is going to get sewn at the far end of it. Some of it might end up next to that, but we won't know till we get the quilt sewing. So we'll put that on the top, that on the bottom, then we'll do the same thing. We're gonna continue on with these taupe colors. The last pieces I'm gonna use are these light ones. They'll go on the outside sides of the quilt. And I even took a couple that I don't really want to use because they're pretty light and plaid, and I'm just gonna pull those out and not use them at all. There, I've got them all stacked up and in order. And the next thing we need to do is to cut our accent pieces. We need three jelly roll strips, three two and a half inch strips from each of these three accent colors. I'm here at the sewing machine with the accent strips and I'm gonna make a strip unit. I'm gonna sew them in this order. I'm gonna make three sets of these in this order every time. So when I make a strip unit that's going to get cut after I sew it, I'm gonna make my stitch length a little bit shorter than normal so that when I make the sub cuts, the stitching doesn't come out. So I'm gonna use about 15 stitches per inch. And then I'm going to be careful that I don't stretch e either one so that the strip unit lays nice and flat. I'm gonna press the seam allowance to one side and it doesn't matter which way you press this. The rule is usually press towards the dark side, so if one of them is darker, you can press your seams towards that fabric. Now all we have to add is that third accent, and I'm gonna put it over here and stitch it on the same way, and then I'm gonna make two more strip sets exactly the same way. Even though I finger pressed it pretty flat, I do like to iron it. So I'm gonna smooth it out, make sure it looks pretty straight, and then 
I like to use a dry iron, make sure that those seams are nice and flat, and then add some steam. The strip units all get subcut into two and a half inch wide strips. So the best way to do that is to line it up on one of the lines on your cutting board, trim off the end, and then just make those two and a half inch cuts. That's all the cutting we have to do and we are ready to start sewing the quilt. So I'm gonna keep my strips in the order that we stacked them in and I find it easier to put them on my lap because otherwise they tend to slide off the table. So I'm just gonna take the first strip, open it up and then put on one of these accent pieces. And I'm gonna put these on in the same order every time. So I've got right sides together and I'm lining up my edges and I haven't cut off the selvage edge there. I'm just gonna leave it there, stitch it and then cut it off. Of course, if you want to cut all your selvage edges off first, you can, but I find that I've got snippers or scissors in my hand right here anyway, and I can just trim that little bit off even with the accent piece. So I'm going to press all of my seams to this side because that's the easiest way for me to press them. And now I'm going to grab the next strip and I'm going to sew it onto here. Now, since I haven't cut the selvage off, I'm going to flip it over so I can make sure I'm within the selvage there. Line it up so I know it's straight. Stitch, trim off that little extra piece. Flip it back over. And I'm just going to keep adding the accent units and the strips until I have sewn the whole jelly roll. It sounds like a lot, but there's only 40 strips in, in my on my lap here, so we are only have to do this 40 times, and then we're gonna have one really, really long strip of fabric. All right, I've got one really, really long strip here, and I find it easier to let that fall into a bin so that I can move this whole thing around easily. I'm not going to iron this whole thing. I'm just going to use it like this because I'm trying to do a race quilt. I'm trying to do it quickly. You could iron if you want. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the floor next to my table. And then I'm gonna pull this out on my long table here. If you don't have a long table, you can still measure without putting it on a table. It does not have to be flat. I'm gonna make my first strip 68 inches long, and I find it easiest to just take a measuring tape, and I'm just going to smooth it all the way along here, and that way, these parts that have not been actually ironed, I know that I will get a good measurement because I'm pressing down on it as I go and nothing is stretching. So when I get to 68 inches, I'm gonna make a little snip here, and you can even put your cutting board underneath you here if you want and use your rotary cutter. But I find that just eyeing it up and cutting it as straight as I can works the best. And it's okay if it's not perfect because when we're all done, we're going to retrim the whole bottom. Now I'm gonna pull this all the way up to the top, get it nice and flat, and I'm gonna measure another 68 inch piece. And I'm gonna measure each time. I'm not just going to lay it next to the first piece. I just find if I do this, every piece will be exactly the same size and my quilt will come out not distorted and not wavering up and down. And I'm going to keep doing this till I have five or six strips all cut to the same length. The 68 inch mark on this one comes almost to the end of these accent pieces. So I'm gonna cut it there, and then I'm just gonna cut this little bit off of the end of this strip so that when I take this to the top, I don't have a little bitty piece at the very top. To put the first two strips together, I'm gonna to wanna to use some pins. So these are going to go right sides together, and I'm just going to put a pin at the very top with the edges lined up, 
and at the very bottom with the edges lined up, and then somewhere in the middle. So I can just reach to stretch this out, and if I put a pin in the middle here, just walking my hands in, I can take this right to the sewing machine and I can hold from pin to pin or hold it like this and grab it in the middle and know that it will fit correctly. So all I'm gonna do is line up these edges, do a nice quarter inch seam and then I'm just peeling it down here to where I get that second pin and feel free to put more pins in if you like. You can use as many pins as you like, but it is important to pin it at the bottom edge so that we know, because we cut them the same length, that they will end up the same length and the quilt won't have jaggedy edges down at the bottom. And this way, if you tend who stretches you so, and most of us stretch either the top or the bottom, your quilt won't be distorted when you're all done. Once I get the, to the bottom, I like to pull it all the way back and then open this up so that I can finger press the seam to the side. So I'm gonna pull it open, anchor it with my finger there, and then pull this finger right down that seam, and I'm finger pressing it. I'm pressing right on that seam. I'm using my fingernail. You can use the pad of your finger, but if you hold it here, it anchors it so that you can kind of pull away, keep it open, go all the way down, and every seam in the whole quilt, it's all gonna go the same direction. We're always gonna finger press to the right. I'm gonna put this section right back where it was originally. And then all I have to do is pin the third strip on and sew it. And I'm gonna keep sewing these on till I have a section that's six strips wide. At that point, I will take it over to the ironing board and actually use the iron to get it nice and flat. Here's the last strip unit. And it's only three strips wide because that's how many I had to finish off the quilt. So let's put this up next to the rest of those strips. There. That's the last section, and you can see the colors look really good with the dark in the middle going out to the light. All I have to do now is sew up these last few seams, and that'll be easy to iron just those last few. Then I'm going to just trim a little bit off of the bottom and a little bit off of the top so it's perfectly straight, and then I'm gonna add a narrow border, a wide border, and get it loaded onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt loaded up, and we need to pick a thread color. I've got several shades of blue, some gray, some green. I even have this taupey color. That's gonna blend in pretty well. It's gonna show a little on the dark, a little in the borders. Green would be a nice option. This is a little bit darker than the green that's in there. I don't think I'll like that as well. Got a nice clear blue here. It's going to show in the light areas quite a bit. Um, lighter blue. This will probably blend in pretty well everywhere except for on the really dark stuff. And then we've got gray. We've got some gray in it. Gray blue there. I'm going to go with the gray. For the quilting pattern, I really wanted to do something with roses. And this is one of my favorite rose patterns. It's called Maggie's Rose. Here it is if you see it bigger. There's one repeat, and I like these leaves a lot. It takes a little bit longer to do this because when the machine has to change directions like that a lot, it slows down, but I think it's worth it.
my jelly roll race quilt is all done and I'm very happy with it turned out with the colors um, going dark in the middle out towards the green and then ending up with the light. When you have light on the sides, the dark border has more area where it can frame it nicely. And I used this same, these are the same fabrics that I used in my accents for the borders and the binding. Those flowers in the quilting and the leaves turned out really nice. It shows up very nicely on the back with that grunge. And it turned out about 60 by 74 inches. We have a free pattern for this uh, quilt and it has lots of different size options. So this is called adjustable size. So you can make almost any size quilt with it. So we've got a chart here with how many strips you need, how big to cut the borders, so that you can make this almost any size. There are a few restrictions for when you make your strip with the accents. If you start laying out your strips, and this will depend on exactly how long your strips are because they vary. If you end up with your, say it's the strip that's gonna go right here, and these are exactly lined up, then you're going to want to move this down a little bit, cut a couple inches off of the top before you lay that out. So you'll see what I mean if you start laying your strips out and this is exactly lined up. You want it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be down that far, but you want it down a little bit so these will cascade down the quilt and not make a straight row all the way across every single time. You can see that my accents are pretty much lined up there, but there's five strips apart here. I'm talking about if you get it lined up with the next strip, because then you'll only end up with a row here and maybe a row here. So it's pretty easy to fix that, and the free pattern tells you exactly how to do that so you won't end up with yours not sprinkled throughout the quilt. Because it's a Jelly Roll race pattern, it's really very fast to make. So I decided to make another one with Christmas fabrics. This is made with Hoffman's Jingle Pop Jelly Roll. It's all Christmas fabrics, and again, I put the darker ones in the middle, I've got greens, reds, a little black, and the gold accents, those were three of the strips that were included in the jelly roll. So instead of using those as strips, I used those as one of the accent colors. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. Now today's giveaway is a log cabin in kind of a plum magenta color and when my sister and I were growing up and we were middle school age, my parents told us we could get new carpet for our room. And this color here, this plum color is the color we chose. It was shag carpet because this was in the 70s and it never wore out. I think it was there for about 40 years. But today you can win this log cabin in this nice plum color. Just click the link right below this uh, video that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address and you might be the lucky winner. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.